Meeting to order at uh, 105. Pardon us for being just a little bit late, but uh, this time we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Kurt Snell, would you bless the meeting, please? Rise, please. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful weather you provide for us. The Lord be with us as we go through the uh, council meeting. Bless all the councilmen here and Lord, we pray for wisdom and understanding as we do our meeting. And bless all the uh, visitors we have today. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilor. At this time, we need a motion to add our new council member. I would make that motion uh, to add her to the committee. Motion by Speaker, second by Janice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Congratulations. Have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, now Bird. we need a motion to amend the agenda. Chairman Bird, I would like to amend the agenda to add uh, a legislative act that's been placed in front of you entitled the Cherokee Nation Motor Vehicle Licensing and Tax Code Amendments of 2013. If you'll remember, we discussed this before in a prior meeting. There's been some changes made to it, uh, and I would like to add it at this time. Second. Okay, a motion to amend, a second by Frankie Hargis there. And you, if, does everybody have the handout? All in favor signify by saying uh, aye. Could I, could we hold aye. on that vote for just one minute? Just a little housekeeping, if I could. Um, I noticed uh, Kara's coming in on streaming video, and I just want to make sure that we all understand the rules that I understand Kara is not on official business of the Cherokee Nation and therefore would not be participating in any vote taken in today's meetings. I think she's waving at us. Can you hear me? I would defer to her. Okay. I think we do do we address the motion that's on the on the floor right now with the second? Well there's not a motion unless somebody makes a motion. She cannot vote at this point point in time unless someone makes a motion and then it would t take two-thirds of this body to overturn what our rules say. Okay, let me clarify something. At this point we had a motion to amend the agenda and a second. You can't take that yet until we clarify who can vote on it. 
Point of order, Mr. Chair. We have not had roll call, and just as a technicality, I think until we have roll call and have established that there is a quorum, we shouldn't. Nobody should be voting on anything Check. until that's done first. I agree. I agree okay. to that. I Check. agree with that. <laughs> Let's hold off on that. Okay. This time, okay. Shelley, do the roll call, please. Joe Bird. Honey. David Walkingstead. Honey. Jack Baker. Here. Harley Bezer. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Jody Fishinghop. Here. Janelle Fulbright. Present. Don Garvin. Frankie Fargus. Present. China Glory Jordan. Present. Lee Keener. Mom. Dick Lay. Here. Curtis Snell. Here. Janice Taylor. Here. David Thornton. Mm -hmm. Victoria Vasquez. Here. Kara Cowan Watts. Bonnie. We do have a quorum. Okay. We do have a quorum. Now to my present housekeeping before we take a vote on our initial amendment to amend the agenda. We we'll need... Have, we'll have to... Uh, we did not have a, a, a meeting established at that time. So I need to... Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that everyone understands we do have an act allowing remote attendance of members of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council for meetings of the Tribal Council Committee. And within that act, there is a Section 5 provision that takes up the issue of Tribal Council attending a meeting remotely. In order to do that, they need to be conducting official Cherokee Nation business or they need to be our at large, uh, at large members. And without those two, one of those two things present, they're not allowed to uh, vote on any business taking place that day. They can observe the meeting, but they're not allowed to vote. Unless they're extended that privilege by two-thirds of the committee. And so unless there is a motion in second and two-thirds of the committee that allows it, um, Councillor Watts can observe the meeting, but she can't vote on anything. Councillor Watts, are you an official business? I consider it official business because I'm on travel that is paid for by the Cherokee Nation. I think that there's been a change in interpretation, whether it's the elective official travel or the official travel is designated for payment out of our budget for the certain items, but I'm happy to, I guess, make this an issue of the body that's not automatic. Um, if there's a motion and a second, I would appreciate the opportunity to continue to participate because two years ago I was at the ACES conference and it was not an issue then and we did not have to take a vote from what I recall. <coughs> and there are other staff, there's staff from the tribe here. So I consider it official business if the tribe is paying for it. Might I respond? Sure. Under uh, Tribal Council Travel Expense Policy, official travel is defined under Section 6 of definitions, and her travel for this particular event is not included under official travel. Now, we all enjoy elective which can be stretched to a much, much greater limit. Uh, even goes to some training, but that's not official business. This is not considered official travel. And she's not been sent by this body, nor has she been sent by the executive branch. And I don't know what happened two years ago. I was not the speaker at that time. I do know we have limitations on our ability to use um, remote, uh, having someone come in remotely and we have to be very protective of it because there are at large counselors that will need it and if we do not keep to our rules, and these are rules by the way that you all passed, this body passed, if we do not keep to our rules, and I do not point these things out to you, very easily it could become four or five that feel like they are on official business and we don't have the spots 
didn't have the spots at the council house. We've always only had two spots to my knowledge. So there, you know, if I don't point these things out to you, then next month, the month after, it may become prohibitive for somebody else to come in because the <clears throat> spots are already taken for something elective. Okay. Wishes of the body. Councilor Baker. Since she is at the ACES conference and not on personal travel, I'll make a motion that she be allowed to vote at the meeting. Second. Motion on tape. Motion, got a second. Discussion? Again, this will take two thirds of the body to allow this. All in favor to allow Councillor Watts to. I had my hand up for discussion. Okay. I think. Councillor yeah. Oates, go ahead. This is, I, this is a courtesy that I would extend to any member of this body to allow them to participate in a meeting uh, of this committee or any committee uh, to, to do otherwise, I think, no matter what the political blocks, what the political feelings that we may have each other, what the political strategies may be, um, is, is borderline unethical, in my book at least. Um, I don't care how oppositional I may be to someone else on this body. If it was anyone in the other block in the same position, I would vote to allow you to be a part of this meeting. Um, that's just good government. And to not do so, in my estimation, uh, is very easily perceived by the public as the targeting of a particular member of this body uh, to try to disallow them from, from playing the role in government that they were elected by their constituents to be able to do. If this was personal business, that might be a different matter, but this is, a, this is one of our representatives who is widely known nationally in the organization that she is participating in this week as a representative from the Cherokee Nation, and she's, she's, she's doing our business for our young people. And I, this is shameful in my opinion, if this body actually votes to disallow uh, an elected member uh, to, to participate in, in a rules committee meeting, in any committee meeting. Uh, I can't think of anything that I would regard as more blatant politics uh, than, than something like that. It's not something that I would do to anyone on this body, and I don't care how strenuously I may disagree. Uh, this is just one of the principles of good government. And uh, I, 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 I sincerely hope that this body does not engage in this type of a power play. Thank you. Comments well taken. Councilor Walkenstick. <clears throat> well, I'm going to vote against this just because of the simple fact that we got a set of presidents of doing the people's business. I think we all should be here. Uh, I could be at a conference right now in South Dakota, and I chose to be here. And uh, anyways, I'm going to be voting against this. Thank you. Speaker. This has absolutely nothing to do with someone's politics. These are rules that you, this body made. Everyone participated in making these rules. And I'm just pointing out to everyone that we need to follow the rules or very quickly things will spin out of control. I have no idea even what might be uh, voted on today that might ultimately be voted on and what anyone's position is today on anything that is on the agenda. For someone to play to stream in video and say this is a political vote, this is not a political vote. This is simply the last Thursday of the month where we always have rules unless there is a special reason like November and December because of holidays, and then we try to give you plenty of notice of when the meetings are going to be. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of rules and executive and finance. We make choices. We make choices in life where we're going to be at certain times. I'm just like Mr. Walking Stick. There were other things that I could do today, but when I signed on six years ago, I signed on to represent my people at these meetings. And the rest of us are here today. We're here to do, to do the people's business. 
This is not precluding her from observing this meeting, but she knew the rules. She helped make the rules. This has nothing to do with politics, folks. This has to do with choices. And choices have been made. And I just ask you all to take that into consideration. I, as the speaker, have an obligation to tell you when we're getting close to maybe violating some of our own rules and the way that we govern ourselves. And I am offended that someone says this has to do with politics. This has absolutely nothing to do with politics. It's simply saying we should follow the rules that we make for these meetings. Thank you. Councillor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just really appreciate uh, the courtesy from my colleagues to be included. I understand that, yes, there's a choice that I could have skipped completely the ACES conference, but when I looked at the airplane travel, this was logistically the only way I could do it in order to make uh, different obligations that I had here at the conference. With that said, I understand that... Um, I mean, I'm here, I'm taking time out from the conference to be online. I have no intention to be disruptive, not competing with other council members trying to do remote attendance. And again, I understand what the policy is, but the interpretation of the policy appears to have changed. I haven't had a conflict where I need to be on video conference in two years. So when, it, when I did realize, I tried contacting the speaker of the council today, but there was no voicemail enabled and other things. And then I sent an email to all of you as soon as I realized that I couldn't reach people when I needed, that I'm asking for the courtesy to be included as a voting member today. I, I doubt my vote makes any difference to the whole scheme of things anyway, but I would appreciate being included. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Point well taken. Uh, Diane, what you might do, I know it doesn't help the situation today, but we need to look at that legislative act and refresh everybody's memory to what was voted on. I don't know when this was implemented. Uh, Mr. Secretary of State, do you remember when this was voted on? Uh, my recollection is it was voted on when I took office in 2007, so it's been some time. Okay. We probably just need to refresh everybody's memory, maybe look at it if that's what you want as, as law. Uh, we need to keep it that way, or we need to amend it to, to satisfy the wishes of the body. In the Travel Council, the Council's travel expense policy was uh, modified last January, and there was a new um, clarification of official travel. Okay, and it was the same as the one, uh, 07? Um, well, 07 was the legislative act, but there's also uh, travel expense policy that the 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 council establishes in conjunction with okay. the we, legislative act. Mr. Chair, we've actually visited these policies in seven, 2007, <clears throat> 2009, 2011, and 2013. And what I would propose to do after today, if, if some of you, and some of you are new, um, we have if you've lost your policy, if you've been here for a while, or if you're new, we'll just send out the new uh, these policies to everyone. But I have been here 7, 9, 11, and 13 and participated in all of the amendments as most everyone on this council has participated in at least one amendment of these policies. Okay. Except uh, we have two. Two, I guess, that I need to. Don't just be here. Yeah. Counselor? We're acting as though the policy says you can't participate if you're not on official business, et cetera, as defined. What the policy says is that a two thirds vote of this council can override that. And that's what we're actually voting on today. Um, so I don't think there's necessarily a, a situation where this gets out of hand and everybody's going to be doing it. This is a, what we've written in this policy, and it's fine the way it is as far as I'm concerned, is that this is a case-by-case -case examination. And that's right. And what I'm saying is that in this instance, we have a counselor who is at a, uh, at a conference where she is recognized 
uh, has been for many years, is representing the Cherokee Nation. Um, she's doing so on behalf of our young people in, in, in concert with our young people, uh, with other people from the Cherokee Nation who are also at this conference. And this discussion is heading in a direction as though we're talking about something that is you know, going to proliferate. This is one case. This is one instance that we are voting on here. And as I said before, under, under the same circumstances, if Councillor Walking Stick had gone to his conference in South Dakota, I would have voted for him to be uh, a part of this meeting uh, electronically. Even though he and I don't agree on, on, on things, uh, if he was in any way, shape, or form in something that was relevant to the business of this tribe and, and its, its greater good, I would have voted in that case for him to also be able to participate in, uh, in this kind of thing. So the policy as it's set up is that we examine this on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and I, I, I can't think of any reason why we would, uh, why we would exclude someone under the circumstances uh, that we are right now. It's just not good government uh, to do that. We want this body and its members to be as fully participatory as they possibly can be, not to limit uh, their participation. In the same way that we want voters to have an ease of voting, not to make it more difficult for them to vote. Uh, and I, <coughs> I, I, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's just kind of mind-blowing to me actually that we would not allow a member of this body, any member of this body, the ability to participate fully uh, if they are in legitimate circumstances of doing the good of the tribe, doing the work of the tribe, and cannot be here physically present. Uh, we want to give the greatest latitude to the members of this body to be able to participate, not to reduce it uh, to very, very narrow degrees. Um, so again, I would just urge people to, uh, to consider that we are not opening this up you know, we're not making any kind of change. We're not setting any kind of precedent. This policy is set up exactly to be handled this way on a case-by-case -case basis. And this is just one instance here. And to me, the circumstances of this are strong uh, for, for, this, for participation by Councillor Watts in, this meeting, in these meetings today. Thank you. Okay, uh, any more comments? I'd call for a question, Chair. Question is called. We had a motion and a second to allow Councillor Watts to to uh, have a have a vote in, in our meeting today. So, you have a motion before you. All in favor? Let's do roll call here, Shelley. Janelle Fulbright, no. Don Garvin, Frankie Hargis, no. Tana Glory Jordan, no. Lake Hainer, yes. Dick Lay. No. Curtis Snell? No. Janice Taylor? No. David Thornton? No. Victoria Vesquez? No. David Walking? No. Kara Cowan Watts? She have her last. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Joe Bird? I abstain as chairman. Julia Coates? Yes. Jody Fishing Hawk? No. We have four yes and ten no. Hey, Chair. Yes, Councilman. Uh, since we did the roll call late, I'd like to motion to approve Victoria Vasquez as to be a, a member of this body, this rules committee. Second. Motion and second to include Councillor Vasquez to this body. Point of information, was uh, Councilwoman Watts vote counted? No. Okay. We were going to come back to her at the end. It did count. I, I voted yes. I don't know that it counts or not, but Victoria's won't count because she wasn't a member yet. Mm -hmm. You'll be noted. Okay, let's get down to some business of the okay. Cherokees. Let's get down to some business okay. items. Yeah, both. Have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Okay, let's get down to some Cherokee business, get away from the bureaucracy of the tribe here. Uh, first report will be... Uh, I thought we did that. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to reports here in a minute. You have this, everyone has this handout. Did we restate my motion? Yes. Uh, I make a motion that we amend the agenda to add to the agenda at the end a legislative act entitled the Cherokee Nation Motor Vehicle <coughs> Licensing and Tax, Tax Code Amendments of 2013. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. aye. All opposed? Okay. Reports, you have those before you. Uh, have Marsha Service, Shannon Buell. Yes, sir. We got approval of minutes yet? No. <coughs> Good afternoon. Wait, wait. Oh, I thought you called you me. You have the minutes time. before you? Oh. Like motion for the minutes. Second. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's mine for grade school sometimes. <laughs> okay, now Shannon, you can give the report. Good afternoon. Uh, one of the things that has happened since I sent the report in is uh, we received a COPS grant uh, totaling about $792,445. Uh, we're only one of 86 agencies nationwide that received this grant. Uh, that includes Native American and non-Native American, so kind of a big deal for us. Uh, what, the, uh, what the grant's going to do is going to allow us to hire three marshals and also equip and train those three marshals. So we're very excited about getting the process of this grant started. Uh, other than that, is there any questions you have about the report? Yes, Councilor Lay. Thank you. Yes. We're going to hire three new marshals, all three at the north end. Is that correct? No. <laughs> uh, don't know where they'll come from. To be honest with you. Uh, well, I mean, will they be placed at the north end? They'll be placed in the 14 counties. You and I have discussed this before. If I don't see a new marshal at the north end pretty soon, um, you know, we're going to have another talk. Well, our marshals have to go where they're called. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but they live in certain areas, in certain locations. They do. But okay. our hiring process isn't by a geographical location. It's by... But your placement process could be. Yes, except we've never placed marshals anywhere, to my knowledge. So a marshal from Tahlequah is going to get a call from South Coffeyville, and the dispatcher is going to say that's not even in the Cherokee Nation. And then the next day you get a call saying, uh-oh, we messed up and they have to go over and talk to the people. Remember that one? I do remember that one. Okay. And we got that resolved. But Thank goodness. Yeah. And I, you did a good job on it. I appreciate it. But <clears throat> like we talked about earlier, a lot of my people have never seen a Cherokee marshal. Must let you well, know I, I can't tell you the, what they are. I can tell you the more marshals we get out there, the more likelihood you'll have marshals going north longer. Can we have one placed at the north? The Marshal Service is not, we've never placed marshals into their home. I understand they all live here. I know where they live. Well, they don't. They live in Owasso. Okay. Uh, How about placing one in Noata and they can run Washington, Noata, Craig County? It's kind of hard to have marshals that get on here as a new marshal have to give up a home that they live in to move somewhere that they're not residing in. That should be part of the process, in my opinion. Yeah, but it, but it's not at this time. Well, it should be. Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Councilor Fishenhoff. I want Shannon to brag on herself. Shannon, what did you get appointed at the uh, White House? Uh, uh, I was asked to be on the White House uh, Drug Enforcement Panel. Uh, it's going to meet in Chicago at the end of uh, November. Uh, I was from the International Association of Chiefs of Police. I was the one Indian uh, country law enforcement officer. I just received that. Before. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Councilor Keenan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, congratulations. <coughs> Thank you. On that. Uh, when, when do you start that? 
Uh, I have a conference call next week, and then I have to go to Chicago the 18th, 19th, and 20th of November for the actual conference to, to be on that panel. Thank you. And in your report, I see another a number of accomplishments from the Marshall Service, so it's like you're doing a good job. Uh, my question was on the COPS grant. Uh, would you repeat that number? Seven. It's uh, $792,445. $445? Yes. Thank you. And uh, so the three marshals, will they be your Cherokee Nation citizens? We always have Cherokee preference. Uh, the, the, the hiring process for a marshal is they have to apply through HR. And HR sends a panel to us. Well, us... Uh, we handle our hiring a little different. Uh, they have to go through several steps. One is a physical fitness test, and let's say we have 50 people apply this for these three positions. Uh, the, only the top five physical fitness scores go on to the next level of written, and then only four of those go on to the oral board, so it's very competitive. Uh, and we did that uh, about a year and a half ago. The reason why we did that, it keeps from uh, me having a best friend that lives somewhere and, and hiring him because I like him. Uh, now it's strictly a, a competition. Whoever the best person is at the end of the day will get that position. And that's why it's really hard to, to you know, to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hire the three marshals. One marshal's going to live in West Siloam, one marshal's going to live in Stillwell, and one marshal's going to live in Bartlesville. I, I don't know where these marshals are. We always, we always, uh, our requirement is they have to live within the 14 county boundary. Uh, but definitely, I don't mind asking marshals to move other places. We have marshals live in Grove. We have marshals live in Jay. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, we'll, we're going to, as a marshal, we'll pick the best one. But it's always been a practice to hire, uh, give preference to those Cherokees. And the, the COPS grant doesn't specify? It does not. You're not, you're not tied to not hiring Cherokee? No, I am not. You're, you're still going to follow your own policy? Yes. Okay. And then um, I, I know when we pass the budget, there weren't going to be any new marshals this year. So that, that's a good thing for the marshal service. It's a fantastic three. thing, yes. So how long is this grant? It's a three-year grant. Um, at the end of the three years, we have to then take on that... that uh, that salaries of those three marshals, but new, uh, attrition and and hopefully just the, the general growth of our agency will facilitate that. What will that bring the number up to? Uh, it'll be 37, I believe. <coughs> With the addition of the three. Yes. Thank you, Marshal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Councilor Thornton, please answer my question. Thank you, Councilor Besser. And I think uh, Lee has a question that I want to know because uh, how many years in the past have we got this grant? This is the first time. This is the first time? Yes. And so, yeah, you've answered the question. It's going to be funded for three years, mm -hmm. but these also be funded for three years. It's not reoccurring, but there's a good chance we may get it again. But they come out every year. So. They do, but they're, they're very selective that they get. Uh, uh, we have gotten COPS grants before, but not a COP hiring grant. Uh, this is our first COPS hiring grant. And let me, I, I want to uh, applaud my staff. It wasn't me that wrote the grant, and I wish I helped out more than I did, but uh, Suzanne Drywater really took this grant by both hands, and where very few agencies got it, we were one of those lucky few. So it was, it was her effort that, that caused us to get it. So. Okay. Thank Good. you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Councilor Taylor. Uh, I just want to point out that while we do have more marshals from Cherokee County than anywhere else, I'm proud to say I have three in my hometown, and that is north of 412. John Ketcher, Mrs. <coughs> Anderson, and Casey King are all from Ralph practice. Travis is. Oh, yes, I forgot about Ralph. Excuse me. Pardon me. Yeah, so I've got four. Oh. <laughs> no, they're my good? dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shannon, your your income for the Marshal Service comes from several places. I think. Yes, it can does. you? I think us, Gen Fund, and CMB, and where else? A DOI, Nahasda, and then grants. How much does CMB or CME or whatever you? I can't give you a, a solid number on that. I'm sorry. I can get it to you though. And Gen Fund, you probably don't. I don't have the number broke down. So there's about four. 
Yeah, yeah there's about four or five there. I'll get those to you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you pass on the uh, congratulations to Suzanne, too, for outstanding work? I sure will. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, would you uh, give our condolences to the, the Marshall's family yes, member that had the accident over the weekend? Yes, uh, those of you who might not know, uh, one of my marshals, his son was killed in an accident the day before yesterday, uh, about four miles west of Stillwell on Highway 51. Uh, just so happens that marshal's father uh, was about the second officer on the scene of that accident. So not only do we have trouble when we work, but sometimes work impacts our family life. So if you would keep the, that officer in his prayers. So. Yes. Uh, Make sure you communicate with uh, our administrative assistant, Gail, to let us know. I will. I'll let, I'll let uh, the council know when the, the funeral services will be and where. Okay. Thank you much, Marshal. Okay. Next report, Office of the Attorney General, Todd Hembry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's always a pleasure to uh, appear before the uh, Tribal Council. Uh, the Office of the Attorney General has been very busy uh, in the last several days. Uh, give you a brief report of what we've been up to uh highlighting the uh, <coughs> the major the major areas uh first as to the uh, litigation involving the united Katua band we will uh, be um, having uh, november 6th is the uh, is the next uh, uh, deadline date and that is for the federal defendants to supplement the record uh in uh, in the, the the northern district case uh uh, the uh, uh, 10th Circuit appeal of the granting of the injunction uh, is uh, uh, the UKB has gotten a, uh, a two-week uh, stay in filing their briefs and uh, uh, that, that matter may be re uh, uh, resolved uh, by just going forward with the uh, Northern District case. Uh, the major uh, deadlines coming up uh, on, on the next issue would be the, Fred, uh, the Friedman suit. Uh, we have a brief due. Our opening brief is November 29th. Uh, we are working on a draft uh, as we speak. Uh, again, I, I, I have reported that uh, uh, there will be a ser series of briefs going back and forth in that matter, but oral arguments will be in late April uh, uh, before Judge Hogan in the... Uh, DC District Court. Uh, we have uh, the the the, uh, the Cherokee Nation will be uh, uh, filing an amicus brief in the Bay Mills, Michigan versus Bay Mills uh, case before the United States Supreme Court. That is a case of uh, great importance to all of Indian Country. Uh, uh, but briefly, the state of Michigan is asking the Supreme Court to overturn. Uh, uh, the Santa Clara Pueblo case, uh, Martinez versus Santa Clara, Clara uh, which is uh, a, uh, a major victory for tribal sovereignty in the uh, in mid 70s. Uh, obviously, we uh, uh, believe that uh, uh, Michigan is, is asking for uh, uh, they're overstepping their their bounds and asking for that uh, that case to be overturned. Uh, when um, we have a, uh, I, I just received today. The final brief or the final draft, when it is uh, uh, filed, I will make sure that the tribal council uh, gets a copy of uh, of that brief, and will keep you apprised on that. Uh, we have uh, uh, taken part in. Um, is Vicky here, Miss Handy? Well, she, she's on travel status. Uh, we have taken part in um, uh, settlement negotiations on the contract support cost case. Uh, uh, that uh, may uh, end up being more of a political solution more than a legal one. Uh, we are uh, working on a, uh, uh, a strategy to keep uh, pressure on our uh, elected officials in Washington, D.C. <coughs> to uh, uh, effectuate the, uh, the settlement in a victory that we've already won in the Supreme Court. So we, I will keep you apprised on that. Uh, the other major uh, uh, 
matter that our office has dealt with is uh, I'm happy to announce that we've reached uh, uh, an agreement, an accord with the state of Oklahoma involving uh, tobacco compacts. Obviously, it will need to be uh, uh, approved by the tribal council. Um, and uh, um, uh, you, w just today, we have finished out the, the, the wording on that, correct, Ms. Hill? And we will be getting you that compact today so that you uh, can, can consider it at your, uh, your next meeting. Uh, the highlights of that is that uh, the uh, um, tobacco uh, <coughs> retailers uh, will, or the state, uh, the state of Oklahoma will rebate back to the Cherokee Nation 70% of the tax collected. Uh, and the Tribal Council will, will uh, pass a mechanism to get that rebate back to uh, uh, the percentage of, of that rebate back to the, the, the to the retailers, 70% uh, for the first two years, 65, 30 or uh, yeah, 65, 30 for uh, a year after that, and uh, 55, 45 uh, for 18 months after that, and then it's a 50-50 split, which is where they're at right now. It's a 50-50 split. Um, this was a very, uh, and also on other tobacco products, your the uh, the state rebate will be a flat rate of 65 percent for the next four years. Um, you know, this has been a very long process, a very uh, uh, difficult process. Uh, one that we have kept uh, the uh, uh, tobacco smoke shop owners involved in every step of the way. Um, as I reported to um, smoke shop owners uh, earlier today. Uh, sometimes when you, you ink a deal, whether that's negotiating a settlement or buying a car, sometimes you have buyer's remorse. You know, what what did I give up? You know, what did I leave on the table? Um, I, I have none of those settlements in this. I truly believe that we got everything and more that the state was willing to uh, to, 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 uh, to negotiate on this this matter. Um, I have not. Uh, uh, I believe it's a, it is a, uh, a very good deal for the Cherokee Nation. It's, even, it's a very good deal for the uh, tobacco uh, uh, retailers who are not only going to be able to stay in business but actually flourish. Uh, uh, there are uh, mechanisms that this body is going to have to pass and we're going to need everyone's uh, thoughts and ideas uh, on uh, the creation of a, uh, a float so we can get the rebate back to the uh, smoke shop owners. Uh, uh, as fast as possible um, and uh, I have people here who are much smarter than me and in, 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 the, the, in this business uh, namely Sarah Hill and Sharon Swepson who could probably uh, will that I know could answer any questions uh, that the uh, that the council uh, may have that has been the highlights of the uh, Attorney General's office I'd entertain any questions from the body questions or comments yes council buzzer uh, Todd, what, what did we give up to get this? Well, the major concession and one that I um, fought against for months was centralized collection. Um, we have uh, collected the, the tax uh, ourselves and did a very good job about it. Uh, actually, in my opinion, did a better job than the state of Oklahoma did. Um, and uh, when we both had our, uh, uh, you know, uh, unattainable positions, both the state of Oklahoma and the Cherokee Nation, we even thought of um, creative ways on, on how to uh, possibly have the tax go into a neutral site. At the end of the day, the state of Oklahoma uh, simply would not give on that point. No other tribe has centralized collection. It's not in any compact. Um, so uh, faced with conceding that point or going to or going to black stamps, which I believe would be would have been devastated the industry, uh, we decided to uh, to allow centralized uh, collection by the state with the uh, with, with safeguards built in into it, you know, to 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 have. Uh, um, prompt and timely rebate to the Cherokee Nation and also uh, is going to necess necessitate the creation of a float bank because, um, you know, growing up in a small business, 
Uh, I understand that you you can't you, your your bills come when they come. Your you know you you can't wait 60 days for for someone to give you your money. So that's why we're going to have to create that mechanism. It's going to take. Um, uh, you know, the cooperation of not only the smoke shop owners, uh, our tax commission, this body, uh, to, uh, uh, to get that done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. King. Councilor King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's, that's the term I was looking for, was a float bank. Uh, I was wondering what y'all were going to call that. Um, do you anticipate what that, how much that'll be? Like a million? Um, that that figure's been been bantered about. Uh, I think it's going to be somewhere between 700,000 700, to 1.1 1 .1 million. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe Sharon uh, could, could have a, a better idea, but I know it's going to be somewhere in that range. Is the uh, casino ATM going to be part of that at all? Can it be with the compact? The casino ATM. I mean, are we going to go to the casino and ask them for more money? I I I, I okay. don't uh, you know you you this body is the keeper of the purse strings and so, you know there are uh, going to uh, and, and I know there are you know there's a contingency reserve there are other funds that that could be used we don't have to uh, you know uh, this can be built over a a period of time uh, so it's not where we're just going to dump a million dollars into it uh, and also part of the capture that we have on this tax. Uh, uh, this this tax collection, we're going to capture part of that to build this fund up. So it's going to be a a, a net a, a zero loss to the Cherokee Nation in the creation of this fund. But they will need startup money or prime prime the pump, so to speak, money that's going to be necessary to to do that. And the state would reimburse us. Well, the state is reimbursed us through that seventy percent tax cut, and then we take a percentage of that to build up that fund. We'll discuss this more when it comes to the You board. guys are the boss on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Chair. Councilor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, the float bank or prime the pump, whichever you want to call it, eventually I would like to see that float <coughs> bank run its fund itself and we get out of that business. Absolutely. That, 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 is, that is the idea. Councilor Coates. I just wanted to clarify something quickly, if I understood this right. You said the centralized collection is the major concession on this tobacco compact, and you said if we hadn't done that, and then you used a term that I wasn't familiar Last with. Stamp. Okay. So can you, I mean, what I was getting sure. out of that is that if we had not made this concession, there would have been no compact? Is that correct? Okay. That's the, can and you elaborate a little bit more on the well, yes, and I'll do my best. And like I said, I have the, the smart people back here who can back me up. Um, it is that uh, if we did not reach a, 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 a an agreement by today, today was the, the deadline, uh, we would not have had a contact. The state of Oklahoma would have notified the wholesalers that, you know, they they are not, uh, uh, you know, that, that all bets are off. Uh, so therefore, uh, what would kick in at that time is a uh, is a term called black stamps, and I, I'm assuming the stamp is <coughs> literally black. Okay, that means that we could sell only to our tribal citizens at tax free, um, and uh, although we are the largest tribe in the in, in, the, uh, in the, the state of Oklahoma in the United States, uh, the amount of black stamps that we would have received on a formula. Um, would not have been near enough to sustain uh, the, the industry. Uh, and in order to go to court to get more black stamps, well, you're still, you know, uh, it, would it would have required a great amount of uh, litigation expense and, and, and literally, I believe, the, uh, the decimation of the, uh, of the industry itself. So um, um, when you go into negotiation not, not able to, to have the nuclear option, uh, and I wouldn't have because I would not have done anything to destroy the industry. Um, we, we, as much as it pains me uh, for centralized collection, um, it was the best thing to do for uh, the Cherokee landholders, the Cherokee retailers, and the Cherokee Nation. So we didn't have a whole lot of leverage, so to speak, in this in this in the matter of making this concession. 
we were limited in, 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 in uh, our, the parameters that I had to work with. Uh, but even given that, I believe that we, uh, I know we, we, we did the very best that uh, uh, any tribe did. I wanted to come out of there at least better than the chops and the chicks, and by golly. <laughs> <laughs> So he publicly stated. So I publicly stated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Thornton. Yes. Do you realize that the Choctaw Nation and the Chickasaw Nation really don't like that verb, of, I mean, the pronunciation of the chops and chicks? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Getting on you for I, I did not did not want to uh, don't, don't uh, around to, them. You know? I, I meant no uh, uh, encumbrance to them. Okay, uh, I've got just some open questions. Uh, how's this uh, compact going to help our uh, Cherokee smoke shops uh, sell cheaper than Quick Trip and Loves? How does it? How will it? Yeah. Well, uh, they will get a you know de depending on how much you decide we capture. To build up the flow bank, uh, they will be able to sell their product. Uh, uh, and I believe, and there, we have some smoke shop owners here, at a substantial reduction uh, or substantial savings than than uh, than uh, uh, those same cigarettes sold at uh, uh, Quick Trip and. What we capture, then, are we rebating back to them and keeping part of it ourselves? Or? That is correct. I mean, because when, when starting tomorrow, um, the state of Oklahoma will be rebate. You know, they'll collect 100% of the tax, but they will rebate rebating back 70% of that tax. That goes to us, okay, to the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we could be greedy and say we're keeping it all, but that would <laughs> that, that wouldn't uh, have accomplished our goal. Mm -hmm. So, there, what we're going to do is the Cherokee Nation will rebate a certain percentage back to the owner, so they can you know, reduce their prices and capture more of the market, okay? Now, what we retain will be your decision, and what we retain will need to create, you know, the, the float bank and to, you know, to, uh, and to eventually make us whole at it. So that capture may, may start off a little bit more and then reduce down. It's whatever uh, physically works, uh, and I'm not a numbers guy. What I'm really interested in is uh, keeping the smoke shops open. That was my yeah, number one priority all through this. people yeah. working in a smoke shop. And, uh, you know, it's a good business for our people, good business for us. So uh, another thing is, uh, what's the difference here between our compact and the Creek Nation compact now? Well, it's, it's hard to compare the two. Um, uh, and, well, what specifically makes ours better? Well, number one, no one's going to go to jail. Uh, <laughs> well, the, I know they uh, paid a lot of money. Out right. Of <laughs> the um, you know I, I'm going to have Sharon come up and, and, and explain that more you know in more detail than it's I know that, 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 that I could. It, but it's really you know it's kind of an apples and oranges deal because yeah. the Creeks had to negotiate theirs <laughs> literally under you know threat of yeah, you know, civil, civil litigation. But I'll, I'll defer to Sharon. And I haven't specifically read it in a while, so my understanding is the Creek Nation is paying six sixty five a carton, which means five fifteen of that goes to the state, which they're getting that's fifty percent of the total tax rate, the ten thirty per carton. So five fifteen of that would go to the state. Then the Creek Nation would be able to retain whatever their tax the dollar and a half or whatever rate they decide they're going to retain. And but in that concession they also have a payback that goes back to the state in theirs for those Things that weren't well, that's paid a pack properly. That's cigarettes. What you're saying? Yes. Well, and yes, per carton, it's a dollar and a half a carton, is what they would get. But I do not know how much that they retain themselves or what they do with that amount of money. But five fifteen of that goes to the state. So the state's actually getting fifty percent of their full rate, whereas with our compact, they're getting thirty percent. Sounds good. Hey. Okay. And uh, also, what about? Uh, if someone comes up with a better compact, are we out or? there? There's no uh, uh, most favored nation uh, uh, compla uh, clause in any of the compacts. Did we have to give that up mostly to 
guarantee what we're what we got or yeah and and, and again that there, there there were certain things that the state would not move on most favored nation clauses and centralized collection you know uh, that, that that was that was their two alamos do you feel that this compact here probably will help us when we go in front of the state on the gaming compacts in other words think we can be as tough well, I, I think that we have shown ourselves to be very um, uh, successful and knowledgeable negotiators with the state, with the COG Compact and with this Tobacco Compact. Uh, it, you know, uh, and and basically, you know, where it's going to help us is that you know we negotiate, you know, reasonably and fair. You know, we, we're not trying to gouge anybody here, but we want to make sure that you know, in this instance, that the uh, that that the uh, the industry survives. And in the COG Compact, we want to make sure that. That the at-large citizens got, you know, uh, got a, a good right rate on the, on on, on uh, uh, car tags. Just so 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 it's it, it can do nothing but help us. Right, that's what I was getting. Uh, just as uh, uh, when is exactly the gaming compact coming up? You know, 2027? 2020. 2020. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dodge. You've done a great job. Councilor Taylor, did you have anything to ask? I did. Um, I want to be sure I understand this float bank. Uh, from where I stand, that sounds more like a pass through. through. We will be funding it probably for the first couple of months. But once we start getting our taxes back from the state that the smoke shop owners have paid in, then that will go back in there. We're not committing a million dollars for the term of this compact because it's going to be replenished. Yeah, the idea is for a zero cost to the Cherokee Nation, correct? That we're working on that. But, the, the, but, the, but the, that, that's the idea is that, uh, uh, that we start, you know, we have to fund it initially, prime right. the pump, but then we build that up and, and replace our money with it. Well, but when, when we get the, the money back from the state, that's going to go in there to pay back out to the smoke shop owners, a portion of it. A portion of it, yes. Right. So it's, I mean, it's not like we're just paying them right. out of our funds. Okay, the, the second question was the percentage that we're going to rebate back to the smoke shop owners, mm -hmm. that has not been determined yet, is that correct? Yes, we, and, and that's part of the, the, you know, that we will need, you know, obviously this body passes it, okay, okay. Uh, but we will need input from our tax commission from smoke shop owners and, and the administration to make sure that uh, uh, all these moving parts work. Okay. But it's going to it's going to take you know, a, a collaborative effort. And and the compact that that we have now is good. I know it goes in stages, and then the last ten years it's fifty fifty. That compact is good for the duration of this time that we've negotiated so far. Is that correct? It's a ten ten year compact. Okay. So what we just yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Yes, good I'm question. Ready. Any more questions for our attorney general? I, uh, we we have some representatives of smoke shop owners here, um, uh, and Mr. Levison has been one of the persons that that has uh, been instrumental in this. I, I if with the chair's permission, would just like to recognize him to, to sure. have any uh, thoughts that he would put on this. Sure, Mr. Levison, would you come forward? <clears throat> Let's give uh, the attorney general and his staff uh, an applause for the negotiations come back because this has been a long. Time. And this is one thing that I said with the smoke shop owners earlier today. Yeah. Uh, if you want to thank me, that's great. But the person in my office that really did the work and really deserves a round of applause is Sarah Hill. She did fantastic. Well, stand up, Sarah. <coughs> See what you look like. Okay. <laughs> okay. If, if it pleases counsel, uh, first I I want to reiterate as strongly as I can because I was in the negotiations. And Todd and Sarah, they went beyond, uh, just beyond anything I even expected. Todd was passionate. It wasn't like he just threw, this is our offer. He got red-faced. He, he stood up and he really got with it. And I want to also thank this administration on behalf of the smoke shop owners. I deal with most of them. This administration saved this industry. And I will tell you this, if we wouldn't have done this compact and got 
some breaks that allow us to stay in business, we would not be here. But again, what you've done through the rebate program for this new compact, uh, without it, we, again, would not be in business. And not only on behalf of myself, but the others I deal with, uh, they're all thankful for you all. And, you know, and I explained this to the state when we met with Todd and, you know, and, and by the way, that Sarah's tough on those, on those documents. I don't want her looking at my stuff. She went word by word. But I also explained to them, I don't think something they realized. But this is not only important to the smoke shop owners, the real beneficiary is your landowners. These families live on these payments each month. And without it, a lot of those families are going to be hurting. And we lose sight of that, but we saved all that rental money come through to all those, uh, to all those Cherokee citizens. But again, thank you for your support. And again, uh, if I read too much, I want to thank uh, Todd and Sarah and the rest of the staff for what you've done. And by the way, uh, Sharon, we talked to uh, at the meeting. And uh, the state even recognized what a good job she did. And one of the negotiators of the state, uh, Mr. Mullins, who was the governor's representative, said anytime she wants a job, she can sure have one with the state. So I thought everybody needed to know that, too. <laughs> that was part Thank of the negotiations that they could not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Mr. Levson. Thank you, Mr. Levson. You, Mr. Levson. You. Todd, you want to go ahead and move on to codification while you're there? Yes. Uh, we have uh, received titles 1 through 50. Uh, and uh, we have divided those between our attorneys and our office to check for accuracy. Uh, we should get the, the remaining titles uh, within the next month with, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're there. Uh, you know, the, uh, all, all the titles are complete. We're just checking for our accuracy. Um, you know, we, I know a number of you may have received a, an email from a, a, an individual in, in California asking about uh, the, um, uh, the codification process, and, and uh, uh, I know I've prepared a letter that uh, I will be uh, sending Mr. Bourne. I know that your council has, and, and uh, I just wanted to uh, rest uh, have everybody know that uh, with Legistar, with the websites uh, that the uh, Supreme Court has, we have met the burden of the constitutional <coughs> mandate. Now, what codification does is make it much more uh, convenient and easier to use for the the citizens and you know we haven't done this since 1994 and that's why we've been working so hard to get this done and we are on uh, we are on the eve of doing that uh, but that being said codification is 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 very close and we're we're like I said it's it's complete we're checking for accuracies and we will have a beautiful five set volume for you uh, uh, in the spring, for sure. Good. Anything else? <clears throat> well, Mr. Attorney General, maybe with the consent of the our principal chief who's here in, in the audience uh, tonight, he may have you explain what this motor, I mean, this tobacco compact is all about to our rest of our tribal constituents. Okay. Be happy to be at your service. Thank you. Thank you. Election Commission, do we have a representative from Election Commission? Mr. Bill Horton. You got bodies. <laughs> I'd like to say uh, good afternoon to all the council members. As you see, I've uh, brought with me the uh, administrator of the election commission office, so there's a lot of things I can't answer. Wanda can answer. I guess y'all all know Wanda Beavers. Wanda sure. Beavers can, can handle it. Well, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we put our faith in her and our stock in her, so... Uh, as you see, you, you should have a report there from the Election Commission of what uh, accomplishments we have made during the past month and future plans on the uh, other things. Have anybody got any questions? Councilor Watkins, Hey, Bill. Uh, first, I want to tell you uh, thank you for showing up to our community meeting there tonight. Uh, we had about 1,300 people show up, and Bill didn't have to be there, but uh, Bill got a sack and went around and started uh, you know, picking up people's trash and uh, that were eating at the tables and stuff, so we, we appreciate that. I, I know you're 
uh, uh, I don't know, it, it, with, with your level of, of stature and everything, we appreciate you coming out and do it, being a servant. Well, we got there a little early, and we got our table all set up and everything, and I told the girls, I said, you know, I got to do something. They're just sitting around, and, you know, it's, don't, time don't pass too fast. So they had two ladies out there putting paper on the tables. So I went out and I started helping them put the paper on the tables, and they was trying to tear it, and they was doing all this. And I had my pocket knife, and this one asked me, said, "Is it legal to have a pocket knife in here?" And I said, "Well, it is right now, for sure." <laughs> but anyway, we got all that done, and uh, then after we got it done, and I look around, and here is David delivering plates. <laughs> So I go tell Joe, I said, Joe, we found a good job for David. He is a good waiter. <laughs> and then to come find it out, after it's all over, I went up to David. I said, David, you were a good waiter. I said, now they got me being a janitor. I'm picking up trash. <laughs> so, but anyway, our initiative with the uh, election commission is trying to get everybody registered. We can get registered. We're going to every community meeting with restoration forms and death forms for people to fill out to try to get people off the roll that that knows that some of their family members have passed away. And we've got stacks of them on the roads. We know that nobody has. We can't take them off. It takes somebody from the family members to get them off. And uh, we'd like to get all that cleaned up. We never will get it cleaned up for sure because that's the last thing in anybody's mind is getting their loved one off the elect off the roll as <coughs> voter registration mm -hmm. in time of turmoil, you know. and and. Nobody ever thinks about it. Nobody ever thinks about going voting until it's voting time. You know, and they say, well, I used to vote over there. Now I vote over here. What's the deal? You know? Well, you know, we've got 15 districts now, so we had to make uh, the council do the lines, and we've got to enforce where the lines are. Yes. I'm Victoria Vasquez, the newest counselor, and I just wanted to thank you for um, the campaign and the election results and all the things that you helped us with. Uh, it was a clean clean election, and I appreciate all the things that you guys did for that. Well, I haven't heard any complaints about the election commission or... I was so glad that we didn't have any challenges or we didn't have anything that come up after that. We didn't have a recount. We didn't go, have to go through all that like we did with the election before. Me too. And uh, <laughs> Janelle, Janelle told me, she said, uh, you know, Bill, when she wanted me to be on the election commission, she said, there's nothing to it, really, you know. And we've been in court about 25 times since I've been on So there is a little more to it than what she thinks there is. Have y'all got any questions Council for Wanda or right. anybody? I know you were the man to handle it, but I just want to thank you and all your group that came down to our <coughs> meeting at Scoy County at the fairgrounds. And it was a much bigger crowd than we anticipated. And uh, y'all did a great job and registered a lot of people to vote, first-time people. And, we really appreciate the job you did. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Speaker Jordan. We want to thank you for coming on Monday night because I know I sent a number of people over to your table that would ask about how to sign up to vote. So you were much appreciated and we want you to come to all of our um, community meetings because you're just doing, this is a great service to the people. To, clean up the voter list, to add people. I know you got a lot of business the other night, and we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. I guess, you know, I, I like meeting people. I was in the school system, you know, for 28 years, and uh, I always enjoyed going to ball games and meeting people, and, and I seen people at y'all's meeting that, that I knew from mm -hmm. other places, you know, that, through the school systems, and, and I'd never, I hadn't seen them in years. And uh, but anyway, we're going to continue going to these community meetings if uh, we're wanted. If uh, the council members want us there, then we will be there. And I think we've got two, what, two coming up in, no, next, in November for sure. Councilor Lay? I, I had Bill and his crew at NOWATA, I think, last time we had a community meeting. And they positioned themselves near the restrooms. They caught everybody. <laughs> Coming and going. Yeah. We've got two more. I think you know this already. But I'm this. Coming up. Yeah, I think we got that on our list. Thank you, Bill. Bill, we're very appreciative of you uh, coming and, and just being present there and answering any questions. There was a gentleman that came up to the stage. Uh, 
kind of a mean looking fellow. Uh, <laughs> uh, had a cap on, blue jeans, and he looked kind of rugged and he motioned me over there. So, trying to push walking stick over there. <laughs> he didn't go for it, but uh, he wanted to know if that was Bill Horton standing over there. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm a referee. He said, I used to referee a lot of your games, is what he told me. He said, but I remember calling a technical on that guy over there. <laughs> so like, when you coached and the administrator, I guess uh, uh, he called a technical on you somewhere. Well, that'd be very easily done. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, kind of no. hard for me to keep my seat. Uh, we appreciate you. you and any, uh, I did miss the uh, meeting at uh, David's down at Gore. We thought it was on the night that we had our meeting that's when it was scheduled and I drove all over Gore I said Gore's not big enough I've got to find where they're having this meeting at and I thought well it's got to be out at the ballpark out there and uh, so anyway I drove out there wasn't any cars and I drove to three service stations and they said well we don't know where the community building is and I said well my goodness so anyway I finally got on the phone and called Janelle and Janelle said, well, my husband can tell you I'm not good at directions. So she got Alfred on the phone. And Alfred said, well, it's there. Before you get into Gore there on the right-hand side, I said, you talking about Steve Owens Ballpark? He said, yeah. I said, well, I've been up there and there's nothing there. So then Janelle called David and David said, oh, it's been postponed for two days. So I guess I'd have been driving for two days to find it. <laughs> and then I forgot about it after they had it on the second day. <laughs> Bill, I really appreciate you coming up there on Tuesday night. Uh, it was offset there for two days, but uh, mm -hmm. we had a we had a different kind of a meeting there. It wasn't actually a meeting; it was just come and register. You could register to vote, or you could register and complain about housing, or you could complain complain about anything you want to. But the main thing is to come and get your cards, your ID cards, and change them. But uh, we, I was a little surprised. Uh, we had just almost 300 come in here and, and register. We didn't uh, produce any food or drinks or anything, but uh, or have a set down meal. If we'd done that, we'd probably got a thousand. Probably. But but it really worked out good, you know. And uh, well, I really appreciate you thinking about us on Tuesday. Though. <laughs> Thank you. There at Salisaw, we had over 750. They said to register at the door. Yeah. And that was quite a turnout for Salisaw, I thought. Now we're going to have to have, Janelle's going to have a remake because I think they only got to take, what, like 200 pictures for the IDs? Their cameras wouldn't work inside because of the metal building. They couldn't get enough signal. So they had to set up outside. And then it started getting kind of chilly, and the people didn't want to sit and wait and stand outside. So we're going to have another one, I think Janelle said, after the first of the year at Roland's cafeteria at the school. And... Uh, they had three cameras, but they said one was broke down. They had to send it off. So maybe they'll have the three, because I know there's going to be a lot more show up down at Roland than what the, the ones that just didn't get their picture taken at, at Salisaw, because you'll have the other end there too. Has anybody got any questions for Wanda or me or anything about the election processes or anything? Bill, Wanda, thank you for the report. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Tax Commission, Sharon Swifton. You have the report in your book. Any questions? Councillor okay. Buzzard. Uh, Sharon, how many smoke shops do you Individual smoke shops and how many tribal smoke shops are there? You would ask me that. I want to say we have close to 50 tribal, or uh, not tribal, individual. individual. And uh, I think nine, eight or nine that are tribal, and I'd have to get those exact numbers for you. Okay, and do you know uh, the see. number of employees while ago? Do we track that at all? In the we do not. Can we get those numbers? Um, I think that would be important. Levinson enough. has I mean, left, but I can get with them and see. I mean, it would just be us asking them to give us that information. So. And the other thing, if we're going to get it, I'd like to know how many Indian people are employed at those. Places. Okay. Uh, if we can have those numbers, it might help us uh, to look at the percentage when we go back to the body percentage down. Yeah. So for the individual shops, correct? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Councillor Thornton. Would you also uh, put families and family member, member, members on there? <clears throat> and I'm going to guess right around 95 to 100 percent Cherokees. <laughs> Any other questions? Council Keenum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, Sharon, do you want to start with the tag or the tobacco first? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever you prefer. <laughs> well, uh, I guess uh, simply is, uh, I guess tomorrow's the big day for you, for both counts. Yes. So um, let's start with tobacco. Okay. Uh, we're, not, we're not there yet. We haven't, uh, well, we're assuming it will be passed which I suspect it will, okay. um, that won't immediately impact your office, um, but, but very quickly it will. Very quickly it will because we will have to set up working with Treasurer Lacey Horn on that, setting up the float bank as they called it and so forth and so on. We will have to get all of the information set up for each one of the shops um, to be able to rebate back to them and make sure that's all set up into our system. So that's things that we can go ahead and start working on now and having that information ready so that when it's time to implement it, you know, it will be, we can expedite that by, by going ahead and collecting that information. So that's something that we will go ahead and start working on now. But we can't really do any specifics until all of the uh, arrangements have been made by you guys as to how much the, pay, the rebate would be in the percentage wise. And, and we in the state are not doing any favors on that article. The, uh, on, the, on the tag now, uh, are you anticipating the, the rush tomorrow, first of the month? We've already had people calling and people showing up already wanting to get their tags, and we were telling them, you know, we have to wait. If legislation passes today, then tomorrow we would be able to tag those people in the compact jurisdiction area. So, yes, we are anticipating. Okay, and I know you have been, so yes. it's not like it's just suddenly thrown on you, but um, you see, you see any problems tomorrow with... For the citizens? No, I've, I've warned the staff. <laughs> um, we have tried to be prepared, so hopefully, you know, they can explain and answer any questions that the citizens might have uh, to be able to get them tagged. So just like I said, depending on the legislation, if it passes today and passes council tonight, then we will implement that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Prayers are with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Any more questions for Councilor Lay? Thank you, sir. How many tag offices and where are they? Do you we have? currently have five tag offices. We have one in Tahlequah, one in Jay, one in Salisaw, one in Adair, and one in Collinsville. And the reason for those offices being in those places are that we tried to set up offices with a 30-mile driving radius to cover the 14-county jurisdictional area, and that's the reason for where those offices are located. That's 30 mile. Approximately 30-mile driving radius for each office. Any more questions? Good report, Sharon. Yeah. All right, thank you. You had all your answers ready, didn't you? Okay, uh, self-governance, who's representing Vicki? Would you please state your name? I'm Kathy King. Kathy. Vicki's in Washington, D.C. Going through some meetings for contract support costs, mm -hmm. IHS and um, self governance. She did have a request that she wanted me to let you know that Miss um, Watts had requested information about compacting for tribal registration, and Vicki has sent that information to the Secretary of State and the Attorney General. Other than that, you have Vicki's written report. So if you have any questions, I'll try to take those back. Any questions for Kathy? Councilor Buzzer. Uh, Kathy, just what's, a, what's the estimated dollar that we're looking at when we're suing for our home back dollars? Do you have an estimate of those dollars? I don't know, but I will get that to you. Million, million. You don't know. I actually don't work with contract support costs. Oh. I primarily work with housing, so. Okay. But we can get you that information. Okay. All right. Then, then, uh, Good. 
Councilor Keeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, when Vicki attended the, uh, the uh, Administration for Children and Families, TAC, in Washington, mm -hmm. did, did she have a, more of a thorough report on anything that came out of that? No? I will ask her to send you one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. Mm -hmm. Questions? Ms. Watson. Yes, Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, so does that mean that I'm going to not get the compact on registration? No, that means does that they are working it? on it. Say that again. From what I understand, I that means that they are working on it. Okay. <laughs> Secretary. Uh, uh, just to reiterate that, okay. we've certainly got to review any compact that goes out, uh, any government record that's requested. It's pretty standard procedure, so Council kind of wants to work on it. Okay. Thank you. Are you good, Councilor Watts? Yes, I said thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you for the report. Thank you. Gaming Commission, Mr. Uh, Jamie Hummingbird. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir. I believe uh, I have a report in your packet, but there's a couple of things I wanted to share with you that have uh, uh, come about since the submission of the report. Uh, one of which uh, Attorney General Hambry mentioned, and that's something that we were following closely on the gaming side, and that is the Bay Mills case. That does have uh, a, a potential for uh, significant impact to tribes across the country with respect to gaming and land into trust. So we'll be anxiously waiting to see what happens in that case. Uh, more locally, uh, the Oklahoma Supreme Court issued out a ruling a couple of weeks ago uh, wherein they uh, affirmed the... Um, uh, concept, if you will, that uh, the state courts are not courts of competent jurisdiction as it pertains to the gaming compacts that were executed with the state back in 2005, and that those courts of competent jurisdiction uh, and that responsibility rests with the tribes. So that is a reversal of a ruling that they had several years ago, but is also an affirmation of the um, uh, arbitration rulings that have been handed down in the Choctaw and the Chickasaw uh, arbitration cases. So we're very pleased to see that the Oklahoma Supreme Court is recognizing tribal courts as the courts of competent jurisdiction. And finally, uh, the uh, NIGC has named uh, John and Dave Chowdhury, who is a Creek Nation citizen, as the interim chair. Uh, Chairwoman Tracy Stevens stepped down at the end of September. And uh, in the interim, while they're trying to find a replacement for her, uh, John Adev is going to be the acting chair for the NIGC. Right now, there is not a, um, a candidate that has been identified by the White House, and this is a presidential appointment, so it will be something that will probably take a little bit of time. Um, this was uh, this appointment would have to be uh, uh, offered up by the president and confirmed by the Senate. So there would be have to be a confirmation hearing before the replacement is named. So. Just wanted to keep you up, uh, up uh, excuse me, up to date on that. There. Any other questions you might have on the report? Mm -hmm. Any questions for Jamie Hummingbird? Jamie, just briefly, uh, would you uh, explain the, the 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 court? I mean, that Bay Mills uh, case that that's that's taking place. Yeah. In in the Bay Mills case, what had happened was uh, the tribe had a opened up a casino, and this was about, I think, in 2010. And they opened up a casino on land that they had uh, purchased with uh, some settlement money that they had received on another claim. Uh, at the time that they opened up the casino, there was an objection raised um, by the state saying that it was not uh, going to be uh, treated as, a, or should not be considered as a tribal casino because the uh, land was not in trust. Um, Bay Mills disagreed with that. They said that they did not necessarily need the state to recognize that land as being Indian land. They also said that they did not need the NIGC's concurrence or their approval for this casino to operate. Uh, during the ensuing legal battle, uh, they have shut, uh, since uh, shut down that operation, but have continued to fight their, their assertion in the courts that, yes, this does qualify as Indian lands under IGRA, because it was bought with that settlement money. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of legal 
ease that I am probably not the best person to ask on, on as far as what the uh, settlement money and any restrictions or that may or may not apply to that. But in, in short, uh, the, uh, the usage of that settlement money and its ability to put that land or have that land considered to be in trust is in question and is probably going to be one of the more uh, deciding factors, I think, in this case. It's going to be one of the more important factors, I think. Similar to Arkansas Riverbed settlement. Correct. Okay. Councilor Coates. Okay, well, I, and Attorney General Hembry, this will probably connect to something you were talking about earlier as well, because um, is this the same case you were talking about in terms of the Santa Clara yes, case as well? That case, Santa Clara, has to do with uh, tribal jurisdiction over residents within reservation boundaries. Is it not? Is that, or am I? Well, the, the, the main principle of Santa, uh, Santa you know, you're, you're right, you know, mm -hmm. but the, uh, uh, you know, Santa Clara is, you know, stands for a large supremacy even of that, of, of tribal sovereignty. You know, right. The, you know, the ability to govern mm -hmm. itself, et cetera. Uh, and that's when I said that I believe Michigan has overstepped its bounds in wanting to uh, the reversal of, of Santa Clara. And one thing about, uh, you know, uh, the Bay Mills case is that, you know, uh, Michigan has a gaming compact with, with tribes just like Oklahoma does, and there is a dispute resolution clause in that uh, compact that we feel that, you know, and most Indian people feel that Michigan did did not take uh, advantage of. They have that built-in remedy. They get that. They want. The, they're, they're, but basically, you're you're you're, you're having um, uh, you're having a, a a state. I think take a unreasonable position, and I believe you have in Bay Mills yeah. that is taking an unreasonable position, and that's usually makes up for that. I guess I'm I'm. You know, and I'm not challenging anything on here. I'm just trying to understand, yeah, yeah. right? Um, I'm because um, I, I would see more similarity with the uh, in this case with what's going on with the UKB, right? Uh, that there's a very close similarity there. I, I guess I'm not quite following how this connects to Santa Clara so much. Is is somebody trying to reside in this? They're trying to make this a sovereign immunity issue instead of a compact. They're trying to open it up to be a yeah. widespread sovereign immunity issue that they want for the Supreme Court. They're trying to limit the focus of this so that it doesn't <clears throat> overall sovereign immunity. They want sovereign immunity restricted. They so this basically threatens like all kinds of things right. huh? and, and right. would impact all sorts of cases right. that have yes, come down. That's, yes, that's okay. what we are signing on to because it goes in that way. It it's focuses a stay narrow the focus one. should be the compact, reading the compact only, using the dispute resolution, you don't need to go here because they should have used this jurisdiction. That's what I see. Okay, got it. And one of the more concerning factors for me, and it probably is for everybody else, is the fact that you had uh, 15 states' attorneys general also submit uh, groups in support of Michigan, Oklahoma being one of them. So uh, I think the most venomous one was probably out of Alabama, where they've had a real contentious relationship between the Porch Creeks and, and the state of Alabama. And they write the, the, uh, uh, the issue is not necessarily about the casino or its legality so much as it is about the sovereign immunity and, and well, sovereignty. Well, fundamentally, this right. seems to come down to uh, states challenging sort of the yes. federal plenary <laughs> um, superiority of their jurisdiction. Yeah, and that's one thing that uh, uh, you know, it, it, it goes further than, than, uh, than what it should. And, Jamie brings up an important part, uh, an important point that as, as good as we think we have relationships with, with the state of Oklahoma, there's always need for improvement. I'm very disappointed in, in General Pruitt's uh, amicus brief uh, in favor of Michigan in this instance. We are looking to build bridges and, and, and uh, having state officials understand the concept, the true concept of sovereignty, and that's just an indication that we got more work. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very good. Thanks for the explanation there. Any more questions? Councilor Leslie? Jamie, I've kind of lost track of what we're doing at the uh, Fire Meadows. How are we handling that now? Are we still paying into that fund, or is it out, or what? Uh, currently, it is still active. I believe uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, meetings and some questions coming up uh, within the next month or so that will cast more light into whether or not Fire Meadows is going to continue as a, uh, as a racing venue. 
at this point, I'm not sure what direction that's going. So, but if I do anything, I'd be glad to share that information with you. Okay, so, uh, so we're still making the payments. Today. Yes, as of as of September, uh, we have continued to make the uh, compact payment. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. Thank you for that report, Jamie. Thank you. <clears throat> Drop it down to old business, Madam Speaker. We're not quite ready on some of the wording given some of the latest. Uh, uh, lawsuits in that area, so I'm going to ask to table that for another um, 30 days. 30 30 days. days. We're working with yeah. Indian Child Welfare days. on that. Mm -hmm. Motion to table? Yes. Say, that second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> New business resolution confirming the reappointment of. Uh, Coleman, Bart, Fife is District Judge, Cherokee Nation District Court. I'd like a motion to this for 90 days. Second. Motion. And a second. Discussion. All in favor, say five by saying aye. 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 All opposed, ayes have it. Point no. of information, Mr. Chair? Yes. Is that the table for 90 days? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. 90. Yes. Thank you. Resolution 13-124, Speaker. Yes, that is a uh, <clears throat> an act repealing LA number 15-96 and amending LA number 32-04 uh, and is to be called the Cherokee Nation Limited Liability Company Act and amending conversions of foreign corporations. And I'd like to put that in the form of a motion and if we ha uh, have a second, I'll then second. okay. With that motion and second, I would like to bring Jim Carrington and Elizabeth Odell, who's already up there. Jim, would you like to come on up? Absolutely. In case they have any questions, I would like to defer to them to explain the act and why we're moving in such direction. Okay. Okay. In Legislative Act 15-96, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Okay, comments? We are looking at doing this to allow for foreign entities or other entities to become domestic, care nation, limited viability. So it's, it's correcting what was already there, which is a conversion process that lacked the ability of a state incorporated entity to come in and then be incorporated and have some CMP entities that are state entities that could then come in and become care nation entities incorporated in that way and they would then become Cherokee Nation LLCs. And so that takes care of it. Okay. And Mr. Carrington has been very beneficial in working with Elizabeth on this. Uh, I believe you all have met him before. He is uh, part of our legal counsel team with CMB and so I just wanted to bring him up and acknowledge both of them for the work in this area. Thank you very much. Good to see you again, and those I've not met, it's good to meet you. Me Councilor Lake? Hi. If somebody could, could kind of run through what we're doing here in, in a, not a legalistic terminology, but something we can all understand. I, I could probably make it really easy. We have, we have some uh, foreign corporations, meaning they're incorporated somewhere else, that would like to be incorporated under Cherokee Nation law. And since they're already incorporated some, somewhere else, such as the state of Oklahoma, we're trying to make an easier path to them um, to be incorporated here. Is that in a nutshell? It, it'd be a straighter, yeah, straighter shot. They don't have to go through and invent the wheel again. They're already a corporation. They just want to be incorporated under us uh, at, for some advantages that uh, they may have for both themselves and for uh, entities of ours that they're doing business with. And, and how will that benefit us, I guess? Is uh, that would probably be a Jim Carrington question. I'm sorry, Jim. The question was how will it benefit the tribe? Uh, the, the main benefit here and the main driver of this is that we want to give us a better argument in court if it comes up that our companies that we own uh, have the same sovereign immunity as the tribe. 
And the reason we are able to argue that if they were formed under our tribal statute is because they were formed under our tribal statute. If they were formed, for example, in the case of Cherokee Medical, prior to the time that we had such a statute, they were formed under Oklahoma law. So court may very well say, well, you formed it under a state law, therefore you, you, uh, you, you uh, made yourself available to the state law. In other words, you're under state law jurisdiction, so you're not really tied to the tribe. So if we were able to convert those non-tribal companies to our tribal company statute, we have a better argument in court for sovereign immunity. That's, that's really the driver here. There have been a couple of cases that has ruled in that area in a negative way, not necessarily against us, but the courts have looked at that from that place, and so that's yeah, one. The Tenth Circuit has yeah. come down with a ruling that although we don't agree with, we feel like the companies have sovereign immunity, this takes that argument away, because the court can say they're not sovereign, if they basically said that if they had been incorporated under the tribe, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been an issue. So it takes that argument away. We don't agree that those corporations that are out there necessarily don't have sovereign immunity, but we don't want that argument to be there either. If we can fix it, we can do something to remedy that. And would the, the state corporation yes. become ours? Yes. Yes. They will be not Cherokee Nations Corporation, but, but it would be organized under, under our law. They will no longer be under the state law. They would be under our law. And that gets rid of any problem areas that you're, I guess, looking at. I'd say it substantially helps. You know, courts swing back and forth, and you never know what kind of ruling you'll get. Uh, it's usually one of several factors that are considered when they look at the sovereign immunity of a company. Some courts just draw a hard line and say, if you're under Oklahoma law, you don't even get to make an argument. So at least if we're able to convert them, we have a better argument. And as we say, we can't promise what courts will do, but, but it's certainly, it's a better option to have. Is there any, are there any legal people in, in the room that disagree with that? <laughs> Good. Councilor Coates. Yes, thank you. Um, this deals uh, exclusively with LLCs uh, because we have um, nonprofit corporations that are organized under the tribe as well. And I wondered if they were, how they would be impacted, if they would also, uh, if there were nonprofit entities that were organized under a state, for instance, that wanted to come under the tribe. Um, and instead, would this uh, impact them, or does it apply to them, or yeah. is it extended to them? Yeah, or? this opens it up to more entities. It's not limited to just one. It's any entity that's not an LLC that wants to convert to become an LLC. So they'd have to convert to becoming an LLC. <laughs> that's this what this does under that act. Okay. So this, 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 this would not have any impact on, on say, a nonprofit corporation or nonprofit entity that was organized under the state but wanted to come under tribal uh, incorpororation. Correct. If, if they try to have, like, a provision, Okay. Is this, this is only to the LLC. LLC. Yeah, we can look at the general corporation and try to get the same thing. Okay. And the LLC acts Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was trying to understand from the dialogue, is this, this is primarily for our own tribally owned businesses, or are we going to be allowing a lot of outside folks to come in and also incorporate under tribal law? Uh, it is not specific uh, either way. I think what we have to recognize, though, is that the statute as it's currently written is not itself limited to Cherokee Nation companies or Cherokee Nation um, Members. I'd say companies being formed as tribal LLCs. And so really, if somebody could form a tribal LLC without being one of our companies, this is really no different than that. This, um, so I hope that answers your question. So can we get a list of the current LLCs formed under tribal law? And then how would we be notified going forward of new LLCs formed under tribal law? Uh, we can absolutely do, give you the list. I brought it okay. with me. That would be the list that's owned by C&B. We would yes. have to go to the Secretary of State's that's office true. to try to get a full list of all <laughs> of those things. If there are, if there are any. If you don't speak into the microphone, I Sorry. can't hear you. No. Right. We can, he can provide the C&B LLCs, but we'd go through the Secretary of State's office to determine the full list of LLCs that are out there, of any that might be incorporated other than through C&B. So that's not something that we can be notified of or provided? 
Yes, we just need to get the list from the Secretary of State's office. We've got to work with them to get a list. Yes, we will work to get a list of the entities that are out there. Okay, hey, can I just that list? Thank you, Elizabeth. Sure. sure. Councilor Lay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Who's going to be in charge? I mean, who's going to approve these companies coming in under this program that you're talking about? They fall under the Secretary of State's office for filings in the Secretary of State's office. Nobody? Who's approving them? Well, if they follow the statute correctly, they're approved as coming in. We don't limit what they do as long as they have done everything under the statute. Sometimes they'll send them to us if they've got questions of whether it does, in fact, comply with the law. So, so will the council won't approve or be notified or anything? No. And that's the way the state law is. Right. You can go online, establish your LLC, or send the things to the Oklahoma Secretary of State. There's no approval as long as you meet all the requirements that the law provides in the, in the state. And ours is the same. There's what no approval a, process. What if it's a company that does business that we don't like? We just go ahead and approve them, in, or somebody just files it and they're off and running? I mean, it can only help the chair Nation that we have more entities that are willing to submit to our law. If they're an outside entity and they're willing to submit to our law and be bound by our laws, that only helps the chair Nation. Most of them are not going to be willing to do that. They're going to want to go into our state because they don't want to be bound by our laws. But to the extent that we have corporations that are outside that are not chair Nation corporations that want to incorporate here, I don't think we want to limit them because we're saying you're okay with binding yourself to our law, that's a good thing because we're in control of our laws. I, I'm a little hesitant here. You're asking me to vote and approve this this law, but you're not allowing me to approve these companies that may come through and maybe two-thirds of this body would not agree with what the business that they're in. If I may. Attorney General, go ahead. Uh, Councilman Lay, the, it is the process that the council would approve. Just like if I wanted to uh, create a, a corporation under Oklahoma law, um, Oklahoma has a, state of a set of statutes that I go through that process and, and submit it to the Oklahoma Secretary of State. And if I've done everything that the law says, I get incorporated. Now, the governor uh, nor the Oklahoma House of Representatives or Senate approves whether I can be a corporation or not. Uh, you know, it is the process that is approved through the legislative branch and, and signed into law by the executive uh, executive branch. You know, so no state or no tribe or no nation has uh, a, an approval of, well, we don't like the way you do business, so we're not going to approve it. Uh, it's the process itself that, 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 it, that of, of actual incorporating. Plus the motivation of this whole thing is really to protect our uh, LLCs that the tribe has. Well, I'm willing to protect our LLCs, but I'm not willing to protect somebody else's LLC. But they can already come in under our statutes. The way they read right well, now, they already can. We probably need to relook at that. Then. And, and if I could add, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead, Mr. Secretary. Prohibits this body from regulating business within our borders. This has nothing to do with the regulation of business within our borders. This is allowing the existence of an LLC within our borders. This, this doesn't restrict the right of this body to do something further in the realm of business regulation. Well, so I don't want the two issues to get confused. Yeah. Councilor Lay, you still have the floor. I, I'd like to yield to the speaker. I see she wants some clarification from me or something, but I, I'm, speaking I'm very hesitant. The thing, the thing I like about this, uh, Councilman Lay, is it subjects them to our laws and it subjects them to our courts. And that's a very important means of control. Excuse me, you can't bring a non-Indian entity to our courthouse. You can when they subject themselves to our they're, jurisdiction. And they're sitting in Canada and they're saying, we're not coming down. No, here, no difference than an LLC doing business in Oklahoma out of state, they're going to ha have to identify an agent. I don't know what's going on here, but, but I'm going to vote no. Thank you. Well, uh, was I next on the list yes. to talk? Yes. Okay. The, the way I see this, we're, we have a greater means of control anytime we subject someone willingly to our court systems, anytime we subject someone willingly to our laws. Now, uh, 
Attorney, or not, yes, Attorney General Todd Hembry is absolutely correct. If you want to <laughs> limit the uh, areas that certain people will do business in, then you simply tweak your law because you're you're no different than a state. You're no different than a city entity. Uh, they may say we're not going to allow certain types of businesses to go through that process. You've already got a law that allows everyone in. So this is not changing that. It's simply broadening who's going to be under the jurisdiction of that area. Now if you want to limit what they can do as an LLC, then we go back and revisit our bigger law that we've had in place for since the early 2000s. 96 was the original LLC yeah. and 96 was the original general mm -hmm. corporation. The LLC was again done in 2004, mm -hmm. so it's been in place for quite a long time. And, and these people are, these LLCs are voluntarily uh, submitting themselves to both our laws and our courts. And, and that's the part that I like because I, I, I know what you're thinking, Councilman Lay, is that we can't, the long arm of the nation can't reach them. But through a legal process, the long arm of the nation can reach them. Uh, they, they would be agreeing to be sued here. They may be in Canada, but they will be agree, agreeing to be sued here where we could take a valid judgment, fall, uh, file that as a foreign judgment in the entity where they live, and we would be able to collect if there's some damages or something that our laws provide for, we would be able to collect that. If I may. Can we yield for just a little bit? Yes, I would. GEG, Connex, on and on. We didn't reach out and grab those guys. No, we did not. No, we did not. GEG was not a LLC and, under and our so laws that I know of. you that they're going to submit themselves mm -hmm. to the Cherokee Courthouse when I know they're not. GEG was not an it LLC. Yes, if yes, it makes a big... out of our hands... It makes a big difference, out of the Cherokee Dick. Nation... Good luck in reaching out and grabbing somebody. GEG, as I understand it, was a uh, <coughs> corporation. It nation. I yeah, mean, it was a state, it, it yeah, was a state this corporation. This had nothing from, to do with from Texas. what we're we're talking about here. That's a whole different set of method that well, you go to try it, to. But it, it parallels. Hold on. And I and I respect that we have a difference of opinion. I'm just not seeing. The boogeyman behind the door that you're seeing well, at the present seeing the time. Boogeyman. Yeah. I want everything out in front, and if I'm going to allow them to do this law, I want to approve who's coming in, and they're not willing to give me that approval. So, I, I, not quite the, right. I will, I will be supporting this wholeheartedly in the in the form that it's in. Uh, I'm not seeing the concerns that you're seeing with respect to you, and I am we. We always agree we can have a difference of opinion. Uh, I think where you want to make changes is to something that is already in effect. It's not the part that we're working on here. It's a law that's already in effect and has been in effect, I think you said, Elizabeth, since 1996? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Thornton? Yes. Uh, I can't, it's hard for me to understand this. It's not that I'm stupid, but I just. What I've read in the past and what I've seen on uh, tribal laws is that any businesses that falls under our Cherokee people, and I think we need to start thinking about our Cherokee people and not someone outside, has to be on 51% of that corporation, uh, company, business, anything that it, it obtains to. And so if we reach out to another uh, business, that it ain't even owned by the Cherokees. It's owned by the Creeks or, or somebody else. Back over here. I can't see our people benefiting from bringing them in. And maybe I'm wrong here, but I just can't see that benefit. And I can't be for this thing. If I yes. may. Let's say I have a business, um, and that business is Todd Hembry Widget Company in Greasy, Oklahoma. That's in the nation. It's in the nation. I can choose to incorporate that business 
under the laws of Delaware. Delaware is one of the, uh, the one, one, probably the, the, the state that has more corporations organized uh, under its laws than any other state in the, in the union. What that means is that the Todd Hembry Widget Company in Greasy, Oklahoma, has submitted itself to sue and be sued in Delaware courts. They w I've submitted myself to be under the jurisdiction of Delaware because I have negotiated, you know, because I have chosen to be there. That's what if, in, and if I was Todd Hembry Widget Company in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and if I wanted to organize under the laws of the Cherokee Nation, LLC, I could form that. I have submitted myself to the jurisdiction of the, the Cherokee Nation. I have submitted myself to sue or be sued in, in, the, in, in the Cherokee Nation. Now the reason for this, remember, is to, uh, to take an argument away from a court that has already held that, hey, if, if you're organized under the laws of, of the Cherokee Nation, you have a sovereign immunity argument. If you're organized under the laws of the state of Oklahoma, you don't have that argument. It is a, a fix to a legal problem that may affect us. It's a good act. It is an act that only promotes our sovereignty, that promotes our jurisdiction of our courts. Um, and uh, if you wanted to pass a law saying we don't want to do business for whatever in, in, in whatever field it is, I mean, we just we just passed a tobacco, com uh, we just discussed a tobacco compact. You could pass a law saying we don't like what tobacco does, so there were you know we we are not we, we can ban that business from our incorporation. I think that would be bad. But you, could, you have the power to do that. So what this does is just open up jurisdiction, avail, uh, has, has uh, companies to avail themselves to the jurisdiction of our court system. It only promotes our sovereignty and our jurisdiction. Yes. Councilor Watts. I don't, can I? Yes, go ahead. You oh, still got the floor. Uh, I don't see where that's going to help. Me. I don't see where that's going to help uh, my next door neighbor, the Cobra Cherokee. I don't, I don't see that helping. Uh, another thing is, did they submit to our tarot laws when they submit to us? <coughs> when they submit to us, our tarot laws should take that business. So and if they if they are practicing you know, or doing business within the Cherokee Nation, what, what if they're I'm, outside? Well, you know, our tarot laws are you know, tour our jurisdiction. Right. Okay, you know, now that that's that, that's as far as we. Okay, yeah. you're bringing them into our jurisdiction, right? And they can, the, you know, they might be over in Timbuktu or Arizona or California or wherever. Job. You know, there's there, you know, just like any state or country, there's a limit to our jurisdiction. Okay, but we're just gonna, you know, we have to, uh, agree to disagree on that. Okay. okay. You good? Well, I I just can't understand. I can't. I've got a. Okay, if I've got a business in California that's raking in sixty million dollars a year, it's not going to help me to to put them under my jurisdiction just so they'll have sovereign immunity. This doesn't give any I don't, corporation. I can't understand it. No, yeah. this doesn't give them sovereign immunity no. unless they're our own. By they the won't have sovereign immunity by getting under this act unless they are our wholly owned corporation by us and by CMB. If we have an outside entity that's not owned by the Cherokee Nation, this does not give them sovereign immunity. This just says they're willing to be bound by our laws, but it will not give them sovereign immunity. This basically is to protect our companies and our businesses, our corporations, uh, to be able to establish an LLC within the tribe so that if they're sued uh, in the future, then a court cannot say there's no sovereign immunity because they were formed under our uh, corporation code rather than through the state's corporation and establishment. This would not give anyone sovereign immunity that doesn't already have it because of being related to the, the tribe. It's not, it in no way deals with sovereign immunity unless they are owned by the tribe. We're going to take one more comment. Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I think I appreciate what our tribal businesses are trying to do, but I think this raises other questions. And I'm concerned, like if you go to the state of Oklahoma, there's reporting on who is a state LLC or other corporation, but I'm not finding that there's a reporting mechanism. So I'd ask that in the December rules meeting, we review a list of existing LLCs um, and review the portion of the act that does the reporting mechanism, not to get into the business of the Secretary of State to make sure that there's transparency. And I think we also need to look and review 
to see if there's an opportunity that, if, for example, they're in the jurisdiction of the Cherokee Nation, the Council of uh, point that if they're in the jurisdiction of the Cherokee Nation, they can submit and should submit to the tarot laws that they're incorporating under tribal law, whether they're tribally owned or not. Um, so I would just ask, Mr. Chairman, that we review those things at the December rules or even the January rules meeting and come back to this because I think there, we are at risk that one of these uh, non-folks non, uh, that are claiming to be Indian, especially Cherokee, could technically incorporate under this and either create a pseudo-tribe or could create a business that could get 8 days. A contract can give it the appearance of legitimacy and about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Points well noted. <clears throat> Any more discussion? So, Madam Chair, I mean, uh, Speaker, you had a motion? Yes, I had a motion. And a second by Councilor uh, Walkenstead. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it was second by Jody. Councilor Fishing Hall. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. Opposed? Uh, it, it's an act that needs to be by roll call. Roll call. Dick Lay? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. Janice Taylor? Yes. David Thornton? Let's give you a Thornton? No. Victoria Vesquez? Yes. David Walking Stick? Yes. Kara Cowan Watts? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Joe Bird? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Jody Fishing Hawk? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? Mm -hmm. Frankie Hargis? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tana Glory Jordan? Yes. Lee Keener. No. We have 12 yes and 3 no. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Announcements? Wait, wait, wait. We've got to do the motor vehicle licensing. Okay, who's got this? Madam uh, Speaker? Okay, uh, the amended agenda includes uh, an act, a uh, legislative act entitled the Cherokee Nation Motor Vehicle Licensing and Tax Code Amendments of 2013. I will put that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? Councilor, what is the sponsor? Anybody else going to be added as sponsor? Here's most everybody else. Everybody? Yes. Everybody. Okay. Everybody. Okay. Go call vote again, sir. Mr. Chair? Yes. I have a comment. I'd like to make a friendly amendment. I know this was a, a rush. Um, acts like so many of these are lately, but on page two, section F, uh, Delaware is D E L A, and at the end is the, the uh, first paragraph. <coughs> page three, about in the middle of the page, it's jurisdictional with the T. There may be others that I may have not spotted, but like hey, would you read that again, Counselor? Yes, sir. Uh, Page 2, Section F, under 103, the, the second, the first paragraph, the second to the last line should be D-E-L-A. I spelled Delaware wrong. Okay. Page 3, Section B, Penalties for Late Registration, about halfway down uh, the paragraph uh, where boundaries is crossed out, it should be jurisdictional. I'd like to make that a friendly amendment. Yes, those appear to be typos, so we'll have the words spelled correctly. Accept that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chair? Can we do by acclamation? We can. <coughs> Choose two counts to walk and sit. 
<coughs> okay, this is by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Acclamation it is. <coughs> Make a motion that we take this to the four o'clock special council meeting. Make a motion and a second for this to go to the four o'clock special meeting. Discussion? It's already on there. It's, it's already on there. Oh, it's already on there. It's the only thing on there. Okay, we're good then. It's cold. Ten minutes to go. Okay, any announcements? Um, we do need to discuss uh, about our next meeting date and time. Um, there is the compact that uh, uh, Attorney General Henry has talked about, the tobacco compact, needs to be approved as soon as possible or ratified as soon as possible. And we still have time to put it on our rules <coughs> agenda and we would have counsel that night if we did it on the 12th. Okay. I'm going to recommend we have the rules on the 12th, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., that's okay. Yeah. I'm going to leave that up to the chairperson now, E and F. Let's have that 11 E and F then. That will work. We don't need to vote on that, do we? Lunch is at Head Start at noon. Yeah, we can, we can be there by then. We can be there by then. Have a meeting here, then we'll go to the Head Start for the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to vote. No. Okay. Uh, is that clear to everybody? Rules at 10 o'clock on the 12th, followed by E and F. Uh, at 11 o'clock, lunch will be served at the Head Start Center. Okay. Any questions or comments? Any motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Say, hey. No. <laughs> no <laughs> Didn't mean for that to come out that way. Sorry. Council Coates? Uh, I just had a quick announcement because yes. um, we are having um, visitors from uh, the at-large communities at our monthly meetings. I don't know if anybody has noticed that over several months here. But this month we have Tanya Armandaris, who is from uh, the Phoenix organization. Um, sitting in back and so um, I would urge all of you to say hello to her and uh, have a conversation with her. I know she uh, wants to meet as many people as she can while she's here. So thank you. I know that we let her say a few words. Okay. Uh, motion to make to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.